Hi everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. B. So the first question I'm going to answer is what causes a fever? I had a question from Ellen who was having a little bit of a debate with her husband about whether a fever was a healthy body reaction or whether it was a sign of something sinister going on. what causes a fever in order to feel comfortable with your child having a fever. So here goes. I hate immunology by the way, but I'm doing my best for you Ellen. So when an invader enters the body, the first cells to notice are the phagocytes. They tend to live in the mucus that lines your airways. The first thing they do is go to the invader, engulf the invader, and send out an alert to all the other immune cells. This alert comes in the form of sending out interleukins. Now interleukins are a group of chemicals whose main aim is to deal with infections and inflammation by getting up to all sorts of mischief. Number one, interleukins cause inflammation. So they cause swelling of the area where the invader is and dilatation of all the vessels. And they do this as sort of a signal to let all the cells know that this is the place the invader is and this is the place you need to be. It's sort of like um, that sort of fire gun people shoot when they're lost out in the middle of the ocean. Second thing that they do is they make the environment hostile for the bacteria or the viruses. They do this by increasing the temperature and by lowering the pH so the bacteria just really can't cope in the environment. They also cause you to feel lethargic and lose your appetite and the reason they do this is so that the body can focus on fighting the infection. The interleukins don't want you to go and run a marathon or eat a kebab or have a crazy night out while it's busy trying to deal with a serious infection. So by making you lethargic and anorexic, you're more likely to just crawl in bed and rest and let it do its thing. There are a lot of interleukins out there and they get up to so much more and I'm sure I'm going to hear from all you immunologists out there, but I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible for me to understand. So interleukins are not the only thing raising the body temperature. Antibody antigen reactions also raise the body temperature. So if your body has met this virus or bacteria before, it's probably made antibodies to it. And the second time the invader arrives in your body, the antibodies recognize it and go and latch on to the cell wall of the virus or bacteria. It starts munching away, trying to destroy the virus or bacteria, and this process generates a temperature. As the bacteria start to die, they start to release chemicals which are also pyrogenic, meaning inducing a temperature. I don't really understand why they do this. Maybe it's some sort of last revenge because they're being killed. Or maybe they're like, if I'm going to go, I'm taking you down with me. But either way, the bacteria themselves are also causing the body's temperature to go up. So, how exactly are all these chemicals causing the body temperature to go up, you ask? Well, let me elaborate. So, the body's temperature is controlled at a center in the brain called the hypothalamus. A little bit like your central heating, you've got a set temperature and the hypothalamus's job is to keep the body temperature at that set temperature. When the interleukins and all the other temperature inducing chemicals are released, they move that set temperature from 36.8 degrees to 41 degrees. And suddenly the hypothalamus has to get all the processes in place to push the body's temperature up to the new setting. So when the when the temperature is pushed up to 41 degrees, the hypothalamus has to get all the vessels to constrict and push all the blood to the middle of the body so that you're not losing so much heat from radiation. It gets you to huddle up again to reduce your body surface area, to reduce the amount of heat, and it may even get you shivering to generate heat. And all this pushes the body temperature up to the new set point. Now when all the reactions have happened and the bacteria is dying and the interleukins are reducing, the set point goes back down to 36.8 degrees. And now the hypothalamus has to put all the processes in place to get the body temperature back down to the new set point. In order to do this, it has to dilate all the vessels so that you start losing heat from radiation. And this is when your child may look red hot and even feel hot to touch. It also may get you sweating and it might make some children pant so they can lose heat through their mouth. 
So this process occurs in cycles because it's not helpful for the body to stay at 41 degrees for a prolonged period of time because it'll start to damage itself. The body's enzymes will start to fry up, the cells will start to dry, and the body's metabolism will be so high that you'll end up using all your energy stores. So the best way to do this is to have short periods of high energy where they try and damage the bacteria and viruses, then back to normal, and then high again, and then back to normal. And that is the body's way of dealing with the infection. So this was a really quick run through of what's happening inside the body and what causes a fever. I hope it makes sense to you and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm really looking forward to your comments, especially you immunologists. I'm sure you have tons to say about it. Um, and thanks for watching Ask Dr. B.